Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the live coding session from the Beyond Identity team. So today we're going to be talking about embed passwordless authentication, and we're going to have a demo on iOS that in under 20 minutes is going to use the SDKs from uh, secure customers to show us how we can use the technology to make a great experience for all your applications. So we're going to start a little bit with uh, an agenda, and then we're going to go on the more meaty parts of the section, like of this presentation. So first, we're going to be talking about what is secure customers and why is it so cool and why you would like to have it in your own applications. Then Ishmael is going to take it over with a demo and we're going to see some code and a presentation that was, I think it, the demo, it's really cool. So I hope you guys agree with me afterwards. Then we're going to see a little bit about the steps to integrate the SDKs in your applications and a code overview on what is it that you need to do. And finally, if you are interested in learning more about the SDKs, about the technology, about the team in general, we're going to show you how to turn into uh, be an early adopter of the uh, secure uh, customers SDKs. So, uh, quick presentation. I am Diego Lizarazo, Senior Developer Evangelist with the Beyond Identity, and I'm going to be your point of contact uh, pretty much for any questions that you may have about the company and also about these particular products that are going to we're going to be showing. And in future events, quite likely you're also going to see that I'm going to be taking the lead on, uh, well, letting you know what is it that we're doing and all the cool things that our engineers are creating. And now we have Ismo. So you are going to hear a little bit, a lot from him today. And I'm just going to start like, hey, Ismo, like, Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, uh, what is your role in the identity and like how are you involved in the secure customers SDK development? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Diego. Uh, so my name is Ishmael. I'm an engineering manager here at Beyond Identity. I've been here for over two years now and I manage a team called uh, Developer Experience and we focus on the SIAM side of the product. So kind of building out the SDKs and the tools necessary for developers to embed our technology into their applications. Um, and one of those SDKs is what we're going to be going over today, the iOS SDK, but we've also got an Android SDK. We've got a web authenticator that you can integrate with using, uh, you know, OAuth and OIDC um, and uh, other SDKs in the works uh, for uh, other platforms. Okay, that, that, that's perfect. So thank you for that, Ismail. And let's talk a little bit about uh, secure customers. So, so what is this? So pretty much secure customers provides you with a set of SDKs, just like uh, Ismail was mentioning. And those SDKs enable your apps to have an excellent passwordless experience. So at the same time that fully protects your customers from account they cover. So I think it's also quite important to mention that with secure customers, your users will not need to download the Beyond Identity Authenticator. And you're going to see it in the demo how that creates an elegant and simple experience for your customers. Uh, also, you are going to have pretty much the best of both worlds, kind of like ease of experience for uh, all your users and customers in your applications, and a secure authentication in all your native or web apps, which again, that's something that Ishmael uh, quite admirably mentioned in, in, in his section. So that is kind of like the general thing, but I think the important part for this session today is getting into the demo. So this is demo time. I'm going to uh, allow uh, Ismail to present. So I'm going to show you what our passwordless solution looks like uh, in a demo application called Soulmate. And Soulmate is an e-commerce app uh, in which you can shop for your favorite shoes. And of course, you want to be assured uh, that it's very difficult, if not impossible, for your account to be taken over. Uh, and we're going to show you how to do just that using uh, Beyond Identity Secure Customer Solution. So I've got the Soulmate uh, app up here on my screen. I'm sharing from my actual device. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on login or sign up. And that takes us to the screen that shows two different things. At the top of the screen, we see uh, a, a legacy way to uh, sign up for a Soulmate account using an email and a password. And this is uh, this could be what your application already has. Um, and a lot of applications already use this. And then at the bottom, we see uh, the approach that we provide, 
um, which is a button that allows you to uh, create an account with Soulmate passwordlessly and also authenticate into that account. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tap on continue with passwordless. And the first thing we see here is that it asks us to set up a passwordless credential on this device. So before I move forward, I want to explain what a credential is exactly. And a credential is your identity that is backed by a private key securely stored on that device. And when I say securely stored, I mean on iOS and macOS, for example, that private key lives in the secure enclave. Uh, on an Android device like a Google Pixel, that could be the Titan chip. On a Windows device, that could be uh, a TPM, a TE. Um, yeah, so anything like that. Uh, okay, so now let's go ahead and actually create an account with Soulmate. So I'm going to tap on Setup, and it takes me to the screen where I need to input an email address. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to tap on register. And it lets me know to check my email. So I'm going to back out of this app, go into my email, and I see that I've received an email from Beyond Identity um, or from Soulmate on behalf of Beyond Identity. And what it's asking me to do is to tap this complete registration button in order to complete the registration. So I'm going to go ahead and tap complete registration. It's going to redirect me into the Soulmate application, create that credential on my device to register me, and then log me right in. So obviously that happened very quickly. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log back out by going to my account settings, go back to this button here, continue with password this login, and this time around it detects that there is already a credential on the device, the one I just registered. So I'm gonna tap on yes, continue to log in, and it'll log me right in. So that's pretty much it for registration and actually logging into an application. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you, and that is if I go into my account settings here uh, and tap on passwordless login, you'll see that uh, this modal pops up and this modal is provided by our SDKs. And there are a couple of things we can do here. One is we can view the device credential and that gives us some information about the credential associated with this device, uh, as well as the ability to delete the credential from the device if we choose to do that. Uh, another thing that we can do that's a bit more interesting is we can actually set up this credential on a different device. So if you want to use Soulmate uh, on a different phone that you have, uh, maybe on a different platform like a, a computer, you can do that. Um, and for the case of this demo, I've got a second uh, iOS device over here on the right side. And if I tap on login and continue with password this login, we see that there is no credential associated with this device and it's asking me to set one up. Rather than go through the process of setting one up here, since I already have an existing account, uh, there's this down here that asks me if I have a credential elsewhere. I'm going to tap on add to this device. And now it's expecting a code for me to enter. So if I go back to the device on the left side that contains that credential and tap on display QR code, it does a uh, face ID biometric scan to uh, ensure that no one can just take your device and add your credential to their own device. And it shows a QR code here that you can scan either using a camera or a code at the very bottom that you can use to input to uh, add this credential to a new device. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type, uh, type in that code at the bottom of the screen. And once I do that, it's going to actually set up a credential, register me on this device, and log me right in. Again, that was uh, that happened very quickly, but if I go into my account settings here, we see this is, in fact, the uh, email I registered with on the device on the left side. And if I log out, and go back to continue with passwordless login, uh, we see that it detects that a credential is already on this device and we can go ahead and log in seamlessly right into the application. So just to kind of like 
clarify a little bit there, like Ishmael. So this would be perfect if someone, for example, is trying to get a, a new device, a new phone, and wants to uh, give access to all the applications that have uh, authentication with Beyond Identity, and then they don't have to do all that entire process of, hey, I forgot my my password or anything like that. Literally, they just can transfer from one to the other, and then you could go back to the original one that they this hypothetical case would be the device that I'm getting rid of, and I just destroy the credentials there, and then I'm done, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you could you could very well do that. Just transfer it to a new device and, you know, clear it out from your old device. Perfect. And, and, and that also, is something that, that I think it's great for, for developers and for, well, users, because then obviously they don't have to deal with that awful part that is like passwords. That is what, what we want to pretty much get rid of. Right, definitely. So I, I think this part of the demo, I think it's awesome, but I think especially for developers, it would be great if we can see a little bit more on the code. What is it that all this awesome thing that you are doing, this magic pretty much, where does it come from? And specifically, how do you start like setting up your bottom to get that passwordless authentication? So uh, we're going to check it on iOS, uh, but I'll, just like Ismail mentioned before, we have also that for Android and web applications, but just to let you know, we're focusing today on iOS, right? Right, yes, we are focusing on iOS. So yeah, let's let's get right into it. Uh, so I'm just gonna clean up my screen here and bring up uh, this. Um, this is essentially all of the code associated with the Soulmate app, except uh, everything to do with uh, the beyond identity logic that's part of the code has been completely removed. So we're going to go through the entire process of kind of bringing that logic back in from scratch and seeing how we can build up that experience I just demoed on Soulmate. So the, the first thing we want to do is we want to bring the SDK into your application. And we can do that using Swift Package Manager. So if you go to File, Add Packages, uh, you can see I've already brought it into this project previously. So it shows up in a recently used list. But uh, if you were to do this from scratch, uh, you would go to github.com slash go beyond identity slash bi dash SDK dash Swift. And you would copy this URL, paste it into the search bar, and it'll populate it just like this. So now that it's here, I'm just going to bring in the latest version, add it to the Soulmate project, and click on Add Package. So this step takes a little while, and there's a bunch of other stuff we still have to do before we can get to the actual coding aspect of it. Uh, so let's go through that setup. So I've got that set up here on the right side. And one thing we have to do is actually create an account with Beyond Identity. Uh, and the way we do that is uh, we have to actually reach out to Beyond Identity and someone has to create an account for you. But the end result of that is that you get an API token you can use to access uh, any APIs you need to configure your account. Uh, so I've done that already beforehand and I have this API token I can use. So the next thing we wanna do is actually configure our account. Uh, and we do that by posting to this specific URL here. Uh, there are a couple of uh, parameters that we want to uh, modify that are necessary in order to move forward. And the first is specifying a display name here. So this is the display name that shows up in the email that I showed you in the demo and also on the credential itself. Uh, you're also going to want to specify a logo URI. And this is a logo that once again shows up on the email and on the credential itself. And arguably the most important thing you need to set up is this registration redirect URI. And that, uh, when you tap on complete registration in the email, uh, this is how you uh, redirect from the email into your application. So the app scheme associated with our application is Soulmate. So I've set this up. So when I tap on complete registration, it knows exactly which application to redirect to, to complete that registration flow. Uh, so let's go ahead, take that paste it on the right side here in terminal and execute it. And we see that I get back a response containing all of the configuration associated with uh, my account on Beyond Identity. And uh, yeah, all the values have been updated. We're all set to go there. The and final thing, oh, sorry. 
No, I was just going to ask if all this setup, uh, this setup is similar what you would do in Android, or do you think it's like a lot of differences? Uh, oh, this would be identical to what you would do in Android. Exactly. So uh, then if you go to the documentation, you're going to have examples of that and pretty much copy paste and well change the parameters you were talking about. Right. Exactly. Uh, and the the final thing we need to do now is actually create an OIDC client, and I'm not going to go into uh, too many details here um, about exactly what this is. But if you've ever set up uh, sign in with Google or sign in with Facebook, uh, you have to go through this flow of actually creating an OIDC client in order to perform the uh, authorization and authentication. So for this, we would post to this particular URL, OIDC slash clients, and we would specify a couple of things here, the name, uh, the, the URI to redirect to, which in our case would be the app scheme. Uh, and a couple of other parameters that are explained in a lot more detail on our developer documentation. So I'll go ahead and actually create that since we're gonna need that when implementing the code. And we get a response back here um, for all the attributes associated with our OIDC client. But really the most important one we care about is going to be the client ID. So I'll go ahead and copy that down here. Okay, so that's essentially all the setup you really need to do. Uh, we can now go back into our Xcode application and bring in the required modules that we need. So for to, to do what we need to do, we need to bring in the Beyond Entity Embedded uh, SDK, which contains uh, certain uh, types that we need to bring into scope and the Beyond Identity Embedded UI, which is all of the UI and the modals that I showed you in the Soulmate app. So I'll go ahead, add that package, and now we've brought that in here. So one thing we're going to implement, uh, rather the first thing we're gonna implement is this button over here. So this button is fully provided by the SDK. You just need to take it and actually add it to your UI. Uh, in our case, we're going to add it to the login view controller, which is this view controller over here. And uh, before doing that, let's just import in the necessary modules. So we're importing Beyond Entity SDK and the Beyond Entity Embedded UI. And now when we go back down here, we can start creating that Beyond Identity button. And we do so by initializing this Beyond Identity button that's brought into scope by what I just imported. Okay, so the first thing we need to specify here is this auth flow type. And there are two, uh, there are two different auth flow types here. There's authorize, which uh, would return an authorization code to you, and then it's up to you to send this authorization code up to your backend and do a, a token exchange there in order to get the ID token and the access token. Or uh, there's this authenticate, auth flow type that immediately returns a token response containing that ID token and access token. Since I've set up my OIDC client in a way that allows us to use this authenticate flow, I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. So for that flow type, there's some config we need to set up. We need that client ID that I created in a step earlier. So we'll paste that right here. We have to specify the redirect URI, which is the app scheme of our application. And then there's this callback here that happens uh, when a, an authentication is successful. You get that token response back and you can take the access token, persist it, and use it to actually sign the user in. Uh, in our case, we've got a function down here that already does just that. It stores the access token somewhere and then redirects the user to a logged in state. So I'll use that over here. And then finally, there's certain config we need to specify here that controls what could show up on the UI that presents itself, that same UI that you saw when we tapped on continue with password this login, and also what some of the buttons do. So in our case, we're gonna need a support URL. So this is a URL that you can redirect users to if anything goes wrong. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna make something up. I'm gonna swami.com slash support. Uh, and then there are two actions here. So uh, the first action is what happens when a user clicks on setup uh, credential, which is the button I clicked up on that took me to a view controller containing an email input. 
we've already have that function defined here, right? We're initializing a register view controller and we're displaying that view controller. So I'll go ahead and use that. And then there's this recover user action. This is not something I showed during the demo, but this is very identical to the signup action, except this would take you to a view controller where you can actually recover uh, your credential if anything has gone wrong. So I'll add that action here. So we've initialized our button. We've provided all of the uh, arguments that we need to provide. And now the last thing we have to do is actually add it to our view. And that's it. We've added the uh, continue with passwordless button to our login view controller. So from the demo, you'll remember there was uh, there was that redirect back into the app from the email where we continued the registration flow, registered a credential, and then logged the user right in. And that's going to happen in the scene delegate. So once again, let's import the necessary modules. And if we go down here, there's this function that gets called whenever a user deep links into our application. And the URL that the user used to deep link into the application can be pulled out this way. So once we have that URL, it's just as simple as calling this function that we provide called register credential and login. And it takes a couple of, it takes uh, three different arguments. Uh, first thing it needs is access to the window. And this is so that it can get the topmost view controller and use that to present uh, our own view controller. Uh, we pass the URL directly into here. The, this is the deep link URL. And then finally, some config we need to specify here. So you'll remember when we went through this registration, it automatically logged you in. So we're going to have to mm -hmm. specify how we want to log the user in. And we're going to use that authenticate flow since that's the flow that we uh, specified earlier when we implemented the button in the login view controller. And we're going to need to fill this in with the same uh, parameters. So the client ID that we uh, that we created here, the same redirect URI. And once again, I've got a very similar function on did authenticate that persists the access token somewhere and logs the user right in. So we'll go ahead and use that. We'll also need to specify a support URL here. And finally, a recovery user action, because uh, there is a possibility you might need to actually recover your credential from this particular flow. Okay. So once we've done this, we have essentially wired up the full registration flow and the authentication flow to log you in. So there's, there's really only one more thing we have to do. And that is, if you remember from the demo, that when I went to the settings screen and uh, brought up that settings modal that allowed you to manage your credential or add that credential to a different device. Mm -hmm. That we're going to add to our account view controller. So before I do anything, once again, we we'll need to bring those two modules in. And then when a specific cell on a table view is tapped, since this entire setting screen is structured as a table view, uh, we're going to want to invoke a function that we provide, and that is open beyond identity settings. And this will bring up that modal that allows you to manage your credential. So what it needs here is a view controller, and this is so that it knows which view controller it can use to present our view controller that we provide. So we're just going to pass in the account view controller here. And then there's some config, once again, that we need to specify here to control the UI. So we'll pass in that same support URL that we've been passing in all along. That exact same sign up action. And finally, that exact same recover user action. And once we've done that, really the only thing left to do is actually build this and see if I've wired it all up correctly. So I'm gonna build it. And it's going to refresh this with a new instance of the app. Uh, okay, looks like I missed one thing here. Okay, 
Let's build it again. And now if we go into login or sign up, there's the button we just added. If I click on continue with passwordless login, uh, we're using the same device that we previously registered a credential with. So it's already gonna pick up that we have a credential on this device. So I'll tap on yes, continue to log in, and it'll log you right in. And then if I go into account settings, we see same account. And if I tap on passwordless login, this is the uh, setting screen that we just wired up over here. Good. I think that's great. And well, pretty much we are kind of like fulfilling what we were promising. Like in kind of like 20 minutes with the explanation, we were able to set it all up. And then my question at this point would be like, if someone wants to take this demo and pretty much replicate all the steps after they check this video that we're going to make available, uh, do you, is this demo in the documentation currently uh, available for uh, early adopters? Uh, it is, yes, on developer.beyondidentity.com. And it's going to go into a lot more detail since I obviously glossed over a couple of things here. Yeah, and then, well, that's that's perfect because I was going to show you in my screen uh, like that part directly. So this is the, uh, you should be able to see the uh, link to the documentation where you get all the details, well, and tutorials that we're going to put there to, for you to use. And you have the QR code directly to go to that uh, link. And also, if you're interested in being part of the early adopter program that we have right now. Also, I created the QR code so you can uh, be part of it and well, start kind of like uh, integrating the SDK directly on your application. And again, well, I'm going to go back for a second to the documentation. Here, not only you're going to find the demo that you had uh, seen today with Ismail, but also pretty much the same documentation, the same implementation that you need for your Android applications or web applications. So you're also going to see them here. I think we are done and, and we really appreciate your participation and hope that you come for new presentations in the future. Thank you, Ismail. All right, thank you so much, Diego.